we are live. David from Automotive Press has come down from Canada to visit <laughs> me in LA, but he's not here for me. He's here for all the manufacturers as he is, of course, a part of Automotive Press. Press. So, David, thank you for uh, joining me here today in my weird hotel room. No, I'm super excited because uh, would you believe this is the first time I'm actually meeting Kirk in person? Yep. We've collaborated multiple times over the over the last year and a half or so, and somehow we never got to meet. So here we are, finally. We had a lunch together, and uh, we're collaborating in person, if you could believe that. Yes, it's a long it's... time coming. <laughs> I don't... I... What is this? Maybe the fifth time we've done a live stream together Probably or something? Late. Or yeah. we've done multiple videos multiple outside ones. of yeah. live stream. So uh, let me know if you guys can hear us because I don't, I, I've never used my microphone in this fashion. So if you guys know, um, this is what we're us. using. Yeah, just yeah. let me know. So let me know if you can hear us and we will continue here in LA for the LA Auto Show. And we have a list here of manufacturers and cars that we want to talk about because the i believe the topic is the best cars or the best vehicles to look forward to at the la auto show if you're in la you're going to be able to see these vehicles uh, if you go to the auto show that we, we talked about here on the stream today so the the elephant of the room is the new prius uh dave and i are both under embargo at this point talking about the north american spec of the vehicle um which we get to see tonight right we get to see it tonight so we're not going to talk about it too much Watch my video that I posted at the wee hours of the morning earlier today if you want to see uh, the Japan spec. But yeah, we know what it looks like, uh, at least from these images, and it's going to be just better in every single way. And it's going to be a Prius that people aspire to for mm. maybe the first time in a very long time. So, and it's definitely going to pull a new demographic. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I just came back from Japan two weeks ago, I guess. I was there for two weeks. and. Uh... No one was talking about the Prius over there at that time. They couldn't talk about it. But Japanese love Prius. They love, or yeah, Asians sure. in general, yeah. like that size. Yeah. And obviously, if you're in Japan, you realize space is so much at premium yeah. that, you know, we love the whatever Land Cruisers and Foreigners and even Sequoia here. But there's no way you can drive that thing in, in Asia or in mo most of Asia anyway. Right. So I think I'm excited for that reason because it's a real global model, not just North American model, mm -hmm. and it looks great, right? As far as the it's Japanese great. model is concerned, yeah, I mean it's fantastic looking. Yes, it's, um, we couldn't have asked for better design from Toyota in terms of uh, what is supposed to be a fuel efficient uh, car, compact car for the masses. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and honestly, if you if we told you that this was uh, an Alfa Romeo hybrid car, you probably would believe it, except for the front end, maybe. Maybe the front end's a little <laughs> bit, you know, right. edgy and Japanese, like, with their hard edges. But, man, the still, like, the, the, the body lines of it are very flowing, um, and it still has a very elegant, yet sporty design at the same time. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's great. No, it's, inter so. it's also interesting that front end is a bit reminiscent of the crown, so... I mean, this must like be the, the crown sport. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this is going to be, I su suppose, uh, what's coming ahead from Toyota, maybe whatever new Camry or anything else that might come out that is not a truck or SUV will probably have that face. This you is know, yeah, this is not the first time we've seen this face. And in fact, we might see something very soon that we can't really talk about. Not yet, uh, but very soon. Very soon that you guys <laughs> might see a similar styling cues that you see on the front end here of this vehicle. But it's also a vehicle that you guys may have seen on both of our channels before because we've talked about another vehicle. But we can't say too much. We, I, yeah. I don't want to get myself into trouble or David into trouble at this well, All point. we can say is look forward to more reveals, right? Yeah, more reveals yeah. coming. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's exciting. Uh, it's more powerful. It's just as fuel efficient. It's actually, it's more fuel efficient than outgoing model, at least in Japan. Um, and, yeah, there's, there's not much to say about it or that we can say at this point other than other than and what we see in yeah, front yeah, of us, we, see like us, we can yeah. talk about what we see from the Japanese media site, but not much, not much more than that. But mm -hmm. again, assuming everything looks the same for us, it looks, it looks good. And like you said in your previous video, for whatever reason, even the interior shot is of a left-hand drive. So <laughs> yeah, I don't know I what don't know. global global it's product. So funny, I yeah, guess. I... They do their own Japan reveal that no other markets can share the media, but. The, uh, the irony is they show a North American spec interior, probably, probably a little yeah. left-hand left yeah. drive there. So it is what it is. 
Um, what else can we expect to see from Toyota, David, do you think? I mean, we talk about maybe a reveal coming. I don't know if it's going to be this event or upcoming events. But what other vehicles would be interesting for just like the average consumer to see at the LA Auto Show under the Toyota boot? Right. Well, I didn't get to go to SEMA show, so I hope they'll have the Trail Hunter models, right? That would be cool. That, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe who knows, maybe even like a different version of a Trail Hunter. Would they show the... Uh... I guess the Tundra Trail mm -hmm. Hunter, right? It was Tundra Trail Hunter. Yeah, yeah. so I, I would have been fun if they showed a different version, like not a Tundra Trail Hunter, but maybe whatever, 400 Trail Hunter or yeah. Sequoia Trail Hunter. Yeah. But I don't know. California is not a big place for those big trucks, so maybe they won't do that. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not uh -huh. quite sure either. Um, but, but I want to see that. Trail... Me personally, I want to see that. They did say more Trail Hunter models are coming, coming. throughout the lineup. Yeah. So I think it's safe to say that Forerunner eventually will. I think it'd be nice if the Forerunner got a Trail Hunter, a special edition before it gets a redesign. Which we think is delayed again. It right? just, yeah. I keep talking about that on my channel and people get uh, either they're very happy that's delayed or they're super upset that it's delayed so many times. But who knows? Who knows at this point? Also, if you guys, well, no one's seen the crown. I don't think you can buy it. I think it's early January is when you buy it. I'm sure the crown will be there at the LA there. Auto Show. So if you guys want yeah. to check out the crown, uh, images and photos can only do so much justice to vehicles. You got to see them. Same thing with this Prius that we're talking about. You got to see them to really appreciate yeah. it. Um, the crown, it's such a unique design. You want to make sure you see it with your eyes before you put an opinion That's on true. it. Sort of it thing. does. It does look better. Like so I saw them in Japan, right? And it does look better in person mm -hmm. than in the photos. I'm still not too crazy about the crossover crown. Want to wait and see how the estate and the SUV versions. What hopefully end up in North America. Yeah, it, it's we'll, we don't know the, the crown situation is kind of a mess. Talking about it pretty uh, subjectively here because. It's it's so high quality. Go ahead, Desert. No, no, people just say, "Are you guys reading the comments?" But it's it's kind of far it's, from where we are. It's kind of far. So and it's really hard to small see, guys. Font. Here, I so, can oh, there, yeah, there, I can go. make the font bigger. Yeah, so now we can see it better. So if you <laughs> if you if you something really important, you may have to recomment. Recomment. Yeah, yeah. So we couldn't we couldn't see the comments earlier. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Oh, uh, the crown. What I was saying is like we we David and I talked about this before. It's like this crown lineup. It makes sense in Europe for a lot of different reasons, but in North America, with the, the success of Lexus and these vehicles getting into Lexus pricing categories mm -hmm. and and not the same, like the Crown's interior is not Lexus in, interior, no, I would say. It's no. below. It doesn't, I don't know. I'm not quite sure about what Toyota is trying to do with the Crown, to be honest, yeah. this version anyway. Yeah. I think the Japanese, like this is a Japanese market, but the Japanese dealers were not happy with this version. So they asked for a, a traditional sedan model, which which is what they showed, and right? And it's gorgeous. And it, it looks gorgeous yeah. looking. It looks cool. So I, I I don't know. I don't think they're going to sell the crown very well. So I, I I think Toyota or Akio Toyota specifically is trying to push the envelope a bit and say hey, we want to be different, avant garde. But I don't, I don't know for crown market. I don't know that they need it to be that different. You know? Yeah. I'm not sure. It, it, I know that the crown sales yeah. were sinking. And yeah. they've been sinking for a long for a time while. in Japan. Yeah. So they're trying to do something to revitalize uh, the nameplate, which is, has has a lot of weight behind it, like yeah. the Prius does. Yeah, A lot of people are saying, hey, yeah. you know, they should just get rid of the Prius nameplate and start it, start over. And it's like, they have a ton of brand equity in Prius. Really, yeah. There's not a single person that in America or even Canada, if you say Prius, they're not going to know what it is. Like, exactly. They know exactly yeah. what the Prius is. And in, again, outside <clears throat> North America, it's such an important model, right? Because it's huge. In Japan, actually, in fact, even in Vancouver, where I live, a lot of our taxi use Prius. Taxis are Priuses, yeah. yeah. People joke around that the, the yellow color you see on the screen is the, the, ta <laughs> the, the new taxi, taxi color. Yeah, probably. Yeah, obviously, the taxi color is like bright yellow. But but, uh, but just, just to finish off, off on the crown, did you like driving it? The, the yeah, yeah, I can I can talk about it now. Those are right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I said that. So, the the crown, the crown hybrid max, hybrid the, max, yeah. which is equivalent to the 500h in, in a lot of ways for the right. Lexus RX. They're definitely more fun to drive, but it's like saying, I don't know. It's the vehicle is still big and heavy that it's still not that fun to drive. You know, it's mm. only fun to drive in a straight line and. I guess, you know, some people can have fun in it, but 
I, I get more satisfaction out of the smoothness of just the normal hybrid setup, the two and a half liter, and I get a lot of satisfaction returning over 40 miles per gallon. I think that's more fun to me because in reality, even though that vehicle has, what's it, 304, 340 mm -hmm. horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque, it's still like, to me, it's just still not that fast. Right, yeah. That, and I mean, you're paying a lot of money it, at that point. I'd rather get a Lexus ES if yeah, you're exactly. getting into that category. Yeah, I drove the new, not new, new, but uh, current edi edition of ES like maybe eight months ago. And I was actually blown away how good. ES is phenomenal. Good, it's it's kind of really good. Yeah. So if I compare that to the Crown, if, even though I know what they're trying to do with the yeah, Crown, yeah. It doesn't feel as premium as I thought it would. Mm -hmm. I, I, maybe they're trying to go after more of a European market, yep. like a more uh, Audi A7, A6 kind of class. But that whole class is also kind of dying, right? That yeah, one, it is. It's no one's diminishing. buying this size uh, premium market. So not quite sure yet. We'll have to wait for time. And I guess time will tell if their strategy might make a difference. But it was smooth and really good to drive and actually handles better than before. But I wasn't blown away, to be very honest. I was blown away by the GR Corolla, mm -hmm. more, more so just because I like that type of and car. That, that vehicle should be at the LA Auto Show too, right? right. The GR Corolla yeah. definitely will be there. So there's a lot of stuff uh, on the Toyota end that, that you can, you'll be able to see the BZ4X, maybe some, <laughs> some other things. I have a GR, or sorry, Grand Highlander and... Yeah. Um, Forerunner at question mark where you're not going to see those, but I'm yeah. sure you guys would like us you to talk to, about it. You have to blink twice if there is a GR Prius coming up. <laughs> we don't we don't know. Uh, in your Japan, there, it'll be a GR Sport. For sure. Yeah, yeah. In Japan, in case you guys didn't know, there is a, Check this out. not the GR, but GR Sport, which is like one level down from GR. There's a GR Sport version of almost everything in there. Yeah, um, Modelista already has their body kits out yeah, for, for the Prius. Go. So... <laughs> There will be a GR Sport Prius. There will be. Yeah. Um, in fact, I just saw in the latest Best Car magazine that um, just back to the crown story that there will be a GR crown, not GR Sport crown, but GR crown. A full blown GR crown. That's what they claim. But it, I I only see that working on like the real sedan that's rear wheel drive. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not, I'm I don't not know sure about, about that either. one either. Yeah. yeah. I'm not biting on that one quite yet. Yeah. So uh, I think I think we to get yeah. to continue moving though. Like we could talk about Toyota all day. They're the largest manufacturer. You guys are pretty passionate about it in total. Um, but we need to keep moving because Toyota is, of course, not the only person or the only only company at the Tokyo. So the Tokyo. We we're talking about Tokyo Auto <laughs> Salon. Uh, yeah, the LA Auto Show. So we're talking about Honda now. Uh, yes. The new CRV, the CRV Hybrid, will be there. Um, we have, well, the new Type R will be there and a lot of people got their driving impressions. Have you driven the Type R yet? No, but I did see it in Japan at the, so I went to the uh, Honda head office mm. and they have a corporate showroom and they had a Type R 30th anniversary, cool. um, week or something. So mm. they had all the Type R models, Beautiful. including the Civic Type R, but I haven't driven it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll be, but the Civic, if there's anything to go by, like based on our experience with Civic SI, which is already pretty good. It's really good. Yeah. I, I would have to assume that Type R will likely be better than the GR Corolla. Even though I love the GR Corolla, it has a bit of a Corolla feel to it. And I, I think the Honda one will be better. I don't know. You guys will probably kill me if I said that, but, but I'm yeah. just being honest. And when it comes to performance, typically Honda seem to be a little bit a more little bit refined. Better. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I could talk about Honda motorcycles all day too. What else? <laughs> uh, what else is going to be there? Well, the the new Pilot redesign will be there, keeping the V six, getting the, the ten, V6. Yeah. 10 speed auto. I think that's going to definitely get a lot of those Highlander buyers into their camp that's... that don't want the turbo four, exactly, or yeah. and necessarily don't want the hybrid system. Either. Because a lot of people just want, hey, I just want a normal engine and a normal I transmission. Yeah. I mean, Honda is really Honda slash Acura is really a North American company versus like one hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas it, or if you look at the sales of Honda, like in Japan versus North America, really Honda is now an American company. Yeah, same thing with Mazda and yeah, Subaru, exactly. largely, yeah. Whereas Toyota still you know, has legs on both continents, yes. right? Yes. And so they have to always compromise and Akio Toyota's this mission to make it more electrified and focus on emissions and stuff. So they keep downgrading all the engines. But but North for North American market, V6 works. You know, it just, it does, yeah. everybody's so upset about the possibility of the foreigner moving to a four cylinder, which will likely happen. Um, so I don't know. I, I wish that Toyota would follow the Honda's footsteps a little bit more and just keep it traditional because that's what people want to buy. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see here. Well, it, uh, I think Mark said Trail Sport. Yeah, the Pilot Trail Sport will probably be there for Honda. Um, the Accord, the new Accord should be there. And the big talking point with the new Accord mm -hmm. is they're getting rid of the Turbo 4, which I'm sure was a very small seller compared probably. to the 1.5 I mean, Turbo. Yeah, but I wonder if they're keeping it for something else down the road. Integra, Integra Type Maybe, S, if probably. they want to source Maybe. those engines over Maybe there. Maybe just differentiate a little bit yeah. more. Yeah, but... Uh, what do you th what do you think of the styling of the Accord? I I don't know if I'm sold yet. I'll, I'll, I'm kind of reserving judgment until yeah. I see it in person. Yeah, me too. Um, the front end is the most generic front end I guess I've ever seen on a car, which yeah. is they went opposite from Crown, right? Crown went for oh, the one yeah. extreme design, yeah. and then Honda decided to make it as conservative as possible. Well, and the the K five and the Sonata are both extreme in their own ways. Yeah, that's and then, true. And maybe that's why, like Honda's, like, hey, we're gonna let the other Japanese companies or the other Asian companies Take play a, chance. a little yeah. bit crazy here. Yeah, maybe. And now the Maxima's gone too, and then you just have the Ultima. And the Ultima is one of the best looking, mm -hmm. I think, sedans out there too from the Asian automakers. So. I think they, they they wanted to play on the conservative end, maybe get the mm -hmm. the market that doesn't want to look too edgy, mm -hmm. um, because we know the, the Camry is pretty aggressive too. Yeah. yeah, and Camry is changing next year, I think. That's our guest anyway. Yeah, Some, sometime next yeah. year. There's actually there's a lot of new models coming up next year. So aside from LA Auto Show, which is kind of beginning of a, a new models being showcased, but there's mm -hmm. so much more coming up. Right? So much more, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to be busy next year. For a little while. This yeah. year has been amazing. Like, I can't believe it's coming to an end. We had so many awesome new reveals. Um, but, like, next year. And before even we get to next year, I'll be driving uh, the Prius for you guys. I can't mm -hmm. wait to share those driving impressions. Um, okay, yeah, here's a question. Was, yeah. Here's a question from Faruqi. Yeah. What do you think mm -hmm. about the Forerunner keeping the V6? He, he says he wants it to keep the V6. I know. You mean the new model, right? Yeah, the, the, new, the new gen. It's not going to keep the V6. I, no. I mean, obviously, I can't tell you, like, it's a fact already. But from my perspective, uh, like, I'm I'm, I'm personally 98% sure that they won't keep it. But but I think the V6, well, the twin turbo V6, not the current V6, uh, will be used for other Toyota slash Lexus model. So I'm, you're not gonna, we're not gonna lose V6 altogether, but I don't think it'll be in the Forerunner. Uh, who knows? I could be wrong, but. I, I agree with you. And, so, and, and Tacoma yeah. too, yeah. there was lots of rumors about Tacoma probably keeping the V6. I really doubt that. Yeah, Even General Motors, yeah. GM compact trucks lost the V6 too. It's completely four cylinder engine. Yep. So I think Tacoma will be also be turbocharged for only guys. You guys might not be happy with that, but. <laughs> <laughs> but people are just so worried about turbocharged engine. But so I spoke to um, Mr. Takumi Kurosawa, who's he was the former head of uh, engine production for Nissan GTR. He's been with Nissan mm. for like whatever forty years. He just retired and just went to see him. He's got a shop. I asked him straight in his face, "Do you ever worry about turbocharged engine over longer period, 10, 20, 30 years?" He's he laughed and said, Are "You crazy, turbocharged you." It's using race cars, commercial application, trucks, trucks. I think with, with semi -trucks. millions and millions of miles. Yeah. He said, as long as it's kept designed properly mm -hmm. and you maintain it. Yeah. Uh, and he recommended this crazy routine of uh, changing oil every 2,000 miles. That's his recommendation anyway. <laughs> and he said, you know what? Turbocharged engine won't last just as long. Something else will break down, he said before that. Yeah. So I know you guys, said, oh, a lot of people said turbocharged engine is a junk. That was the case 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Not the case today. Well, here's the thing. Like, the a, case a lot of people import these JDM hot cars from right. the like the 90s. And those turbos, like the, those engines are still putting still out. running. Yeah. Not only running, but they're putting out near factory uh, yeah. horsepower numbers. That's still true. all these miles and years later, those turbos are still, still, working. still yeah. working great. So, uh Mark says, I'm making him sad. Well, I'm sorry I'm making you sad, Mark. Hopefully you have a better day, my friend. <laughs> Did we miss some, uh, some uh, I'm questions? sure we can't we can't hit all the uh questions, all yeah. the questions. And YouTube has it where it's like, oh, we're we're really only gonna prioritize the super chats essentially. Right, right. So it's hard it's hard to single out the questions yeah. for you guys. But that could be helpful if you guys put the super chat. Right, right. Help, uh, help Kirk here, guys, well, yeah. so he can pay so his I can, bills. Yeah, so I can keep paying, uh, so I can keep like buying nice things for David over here <laughs> while, while I can before he gets shipped back north. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
you know, uh, it, it, <laughs> oh, I'll get I'll get Dave a drink tonight, but it's probably going to be on Toyota's tab. So <laughs> yeah, we both will be at a Toyota event tonight. So <laughs> I'm hoping that maybe so we're doing a live stream right now for Kirk. I I might be doing a live stream tonight directly from Toyota if they allow mm -hmm. me to, mm -hmm. and then you know Kirk will be beside me too. We'll see yeah. how that goes. I'm not sure yet. Will Yaris ever come back to America? No, that's no. gone. Yaris is gone. Gonzo. I saw GR Yaris a couple of times in Japan, even on the street, and then what? It looks great. That car looks good. That's the car. We it's amazing. Done. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. GR... People would have loved it. Yeah, GR Corolla is great, but not not quite the same category as GR Yaris, which is a purely dedicated rally car. That that car is more more of a direct competitor, and so not. I would say it would have a better chance at taking down like the Civic Type R I agree. Yeah. than yeah. The, the bigger, heavier I Corolla, so. GR yeah, Corolla. I agree too. So there oh, we go. Okay, there's the Super Chat. chat. See, like it's <laughs> bright letters. It's like big font. <laughs> there you go. Buy Polar Bear 722. Thank you for the two box. Will there be a Sienna or Prius Trail Runner? <laughs> you know, as, as fun it would be to see, we're not going to see yeah. that. I think, um, it, go yeah. ahead. I think it, yeah, no, it's going to be only for models that typically use a TRD label. Yeah. Right? So, so even those vehicles are available with all wheel drive, the Prius yeah. and the Sienna, they're not off-roading vehicles, no, it's no, mainly yeah. for on-road performance and traction. Exactly. So I think, I think there'll be, um, Tacoma trail runner, obviously Tundra, and then maybe not the current forerunner, but when the new one comes out, there'll be one. Mm, Sequoia and, too, I think. Sequoia will get it. Yeah. Any other new models Toyota might introduce in that in that area, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we we kind of covered up. Every, no one's even. I don't know. There has there been that many. Um, Mark, any? And here's a good one because I, I, we're we're still on Honda, trying to get yeah, back oh, to yeah, Honda before yes, we move yes, on to yes. Subaru yeah, here. Good point. Any? Uh, Mark is saying any news on the Acura front TLX, maybe a certain type performance car. Um, there will be something. I think there will be a press release from Acura. I, I don't know. Let me let me see if the Acura newsroom is up right now. I do have the tab open. You mean for the LA Auto Show? For the LA Auto Show, I don't know if they have. Yeah. Here we go. There was something this, there. This was under embargo. I, I wasn't able to make a video to, to, of it, but um, the last NSX Type S, um, 350 of 350, end of production. So mm. rest in peace, NSX. There you go. Wow. We're, we're into Acura stuff. I don't yeah, want to go yeah. into Acura yeah, quite okay. yet. You know, the, um, the but, la not this current. Uh, NSX, but uh, the previous version. I was at the Honda factory when the last model ro rolled out. Oh, it's just by, by luck. We, we happened to be there touring oh the gosh. factory, and then the, the, the manager said, By the way, the Honda NSX, Honda NSX, there yeah. is the last one. It's that's it. You saw history. I, I saw history, yeah. Incredible. We weren't allowed to take pictures or anything, obviously, but that was still what a story, though. stuck in my head. That's incredible. Yeah. So um, the vehicle on the right, the only TLX news I have, this is the Type S PMC edition. They they give it some gold wheels. Um, they give it all like the accessor aftermarket accessories through the dealer is put on here. Uh, unique trims, um, like blacked out exhaust, blacked out badges. Mm -hmm. Like it's cool. It's going to cost you a little bit more if I remember right versus a normal TLX. Mm -hmm. uh, so but something to uh, comment on the PMC, but they, they claim it's all hand built. At the special uh, assembly, right? Yeah, the performance manufacturing center. Yeah. PMC, but you you kind of have to remember that's a bit of a. It, it is true, but not quite what you think because all of the um, the structure and the the foundation for the car it has to be built in a normal factory. Sure. So that's the the actual what we call body in white, which is before it gets painted, as well as the um, you know things like engine and transmission, all that stuff mm -hmm. is built. Uh, at a normal factory, and they do yeah, the, the final end... assembly here, just right. the final. So it's it's a little right. bit deceiving. The paint, I know, I know they have their own paint shop, I, from what I remember. Yes, they do right. because they have their own unique colors over yeah. here. So that's why these PMC editions always have mm -hmm. some pretty cool colors uh, accompanying with them. Because this is mm -hmm. uh, like Long Beach blue here, which is traditionally it's an NSX really, color. It's really nice. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it's not hundred percent built in the PMC place. No, they get the shells brought in. Is essentially exactly. what you're saying. Yeah. But there's a lot more hands assembling, hands-on assembling going on in these vehicles than. Any other Honda or Acura yeah, probably true. out there. Um, so, anyways, we're going to move on from Honda. We're going to talk about Subaru just briefly here. Um, sure. Then there's a refresh Legacy you'll see at the LA Auto yep. Show. Just looks, I think. I don't know I really so. anything about it. I don't know too much about it either. Yeah. I mean, other than to just make a general comment that Legacy used to be a cool car. 
They are, you know, I, I, I yeah. remember in Japan, Legacy Wagon was a hot, like oh, everyone wait, wanted a Legacy Wagon. Yeah. So I don't yeah. know, uh, it kind of fell off that uh, yeah. wagon a long time ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, but still an important model globally. Globally, yeah. yeah. Um, and the Impreza, right? Hatchback, I think. The, or... the, the, there'll be a redesign Impreza. Yeah. So I, I don't know what to think of powertrains, maybe two liter and two and a half liter. Probably. I don't know, maybe they give you two, two different boxer yeah. engines to pick from. Mm. CVTs, maybe if we are lucky, we get the continuation of a like a five speed or a six speed would be cool. Mm. But I really, I'm not an Impreza guy. So other than the WRX that I reviewed on the channel, which was, it's kind of like it has separated itself from the Impreza. Uh, I really don't know a lot about the standard mm. Impreza. Did you, did you like the WRX by the way, driving it? It's the most yeah. vanilla enthusiast car I've ever driven. <laughs> yeah, because it's very refined and smooth, It's right? It's refined, it's smooth. Mm. It doesn't like to be hurried from a stop though, which is yeah. ironic because it has all wheel drive. I'm That's expecting true. a hard launch and like, you've really got to push that thing mm. to uncomfortable. Like you have to drop the clutch at like 5,000 yeah. RPM to right. get that thing to like want to go. Yeah, that's true. So, I like the steering feel and handling better. Like I actually like the yeah. steering feel better yeah. than the Gero Corolla. The ride quality is great. Ride was so It'd nice. It'd be a great yeah. everyday like yeah. car. It is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like instead of buying an like an Audi S3 or something, mm -hmm. that would be like a great car to have. Yeah, I, I would buy that in a heartbeat. I think. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. Like it, the thing is, it's like when I want a car that's more of an enthusiast car, I want to feel something more emotional. Yeah, and I don't get any emotion from the no, new WRX. True. Yeah, it's definitely very vanilla feel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, some of these people are saying we're going to talk about Korean market. We'll get to the Korean market. Yeah, yeah. we'll get to that. We're, we're pretty much done with Subaru. Just want to mention the Refresh Legacy. You, we're getting the new uh, Impreza redesign announced, I think, either tonight or tomorrow morning. Mm. Uh, you'll be able to see the Solterra there at the LA Auto Show, uh, as well as all the other models that they have, but not really worth talking about, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Nissan. Mm -hmm. I've heard mixed things on the Aria. I think what mm -hmm. a lot of people are saying is it, it drives great. It's definitely more of a, a luxury sort of cruiser, very smooth mm -hmm. and refined and very high end materials on the inside. And it has a beautiful design. Nissan yeah. has incredible designs overall, even they their do. Infinity division. Yeah, so I went to the Nissan headquarters, global headquarters in Japan. It's in Yokohama. They have a new headquarters or, or a uh, new, what is it they have there that's that's new? No, it's a, that building has been around for a while. Okay. Like I, I can't remember 10, maybe even more than 10 okay. years, but it still looks pretty new, but they revised and renovated the, uh, the pavilion? bottom floor. Is that what it's called? A pavilion? It's not called, I said called Nissan Pavilion, Nissan, I can't remember what's it called now, but anyway, so the main, the whole main floor, they renovated it. Not, okay. not too long ago. So that the whole first floor, it's now a big corporate showroom. They have almost every model there. Wow. And it's really, really well done. Like there's a, a booth there you can go and ask for any brochures. Like you can get a GTR brochure. But Japanese still likes physical brochures. So you get this hard bound. Yeah, nice. You know, they think probably cost 50 bucks to make, yeah. right? You can you can get any of the brochures. And they had a, like a, G, um, a GTR or Nissan Giz, uh, Nismo gift shop there. Mm -hmm. And they had an area, quite a few area there, like four or five. You can go and sit down, mm -hmm. sit in that, and it's a really cool showroom. So, so you saw a few arias there. Nice paint colors, right? Very nice yeah. paint colors. Uh, I I don't know if the ones that I saw was a production model or or not. The the body alignment and quality was so so, but they might be prototypes. Yeah. But the inside looked really fantastic. Yeah. So. Uh, something else you'll see there for Nissan is the new Z. So if you guys haven't seen your new Z on the streets, I don't even know if I have, which is rare because in South Florida, I see everything, everything on the yeah. streets and you see everything in there in Vancouver. That's true. I haven't seen it on the street either. I don't, I don't know if I've seen a new Z yet. Has there been even, there has been deliveries, right? In North America. Oh yeah. I think yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Also there's the refresh Versa, which is, you know, we're talking about all these cars. Mm. Some of them are, are, you know, None of them would start under 20k other than this Versa, mm -hmm. so uh, they're a good budget play there, and I think it's a, a handsome refresh. And we're talking about Nissan, but I never got over to the Nissan tab. <laughs> Here's the new Versa, I think it's a, it's a like decent that. little design, okay. yeah. I, you know, for 15 to 20k, whatever it is, yeah, it starts at 15k. What much, what more do you want? Exactly. <laughs> um, moving on. To Mazda has been the last Japanese and we'll spend a lot of time with the Koreans and we'll talk about the luxury brands from the Asian brands as well. And then 
I'll, I'll uh, let David go. I don't want to keep him too long. Oh, that's okay. So I got time for Kirk. I always have time for Kirk. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, all right, Mazda. I don't know what we're going to see from Mazda. They keep... Well, let's go to the Mazda tab. Okay. They just teased that the inline six is coming for the CX-90. We all... Oh gosh, we've known... How long have I been making videos talking about the inline six coming from Mazda? It's been like two or three years at yeah, this it's been point. Yeah, a while, yeah. Um, they already have the inline diesel, inline six diesel in the right. European markets. Uh, so we're, we're now we're just waiting for the turbo to come out. I made a video talking about how based off the the specs of the the turbo six and other markets the gasoline turbo six it mm -hmm. doesn't seem that impressive on paper because they compared it to the bmw in line six which mm -hmm. is a smaller displacement and just has way more power way more torque and i don't mm -hmm. know but uh, i did go to mazda also on this yes. trip. i went to the mazda head office then i went to the uh the whole food plant which is about an hour away. Here, yeah it's it's not quite in hiroshima anymore it's pretty far away oh, from hiroshima okay. But uh, but they let me take the uh, tour of the factory. So I'm working on that video to come out, I don't know, next week sometime. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, I was actually really blown away by their manufacturing strategy. We, I know it's not you guys might not be all that interested in production stuff, but they have a really good production system and engineering capability that I think other manufacturers do not have. And when you look at, yeah. you know, I like to measure the paint thickness and look yeah. at the gap. The master products are always top notch, like sometimes better than Toyota ones. I believe it. Yeah, like the, the, you know, it's the gap are really small. Mm -hmm. The body alignment is almost perfect. Like I, I really think the master is one brand that is underappreciated. Like it's still built in Japan. It still has the Japanese quality, it has the dedication of the Japanese mm -hmm. artisan. Yeah. But people don't talk about it too much because it's still a niche yes. player in some way. Right. Yeah. Well, and with this build quality and manufacturing processes that they have they can they can start charging premium prices yeah, they, yeah. So there's a lot of luxury brands out there and other startup brands out there that have terrible build quality and they're charging an arm and leg on a product for exactly. their products yeah. and they're getting getting a, a poorly assembled vehicle um and it's no surprise that toyota picked mazda to share a joint plant in alabama because yeah. they know and they're, all the, the Corolla Crosses are using the, the Mazda paint technology. Right, yeah. Point. From what I understand, so one is called the, uh, there's two lines at the Mazda Toyota factory. So what is it called? MT, what is it called? Mazda Toyota North America, I think it's called. But it's anyway, like a bunch of M's and yeah, T's. Yeah, MTN, I think. Yeah. But um, it's the two lines are named after the two first uh, space shuttles, Discovery and Apollo. Okay. So yeah. Apollo, no, was it Apollo? No, is it the Apollo line? Discovery. Discovery and... sounds right. Discovery, I can't remember the other one. I think it was Apollo. I'm pretty okay. sure it's Apollo. Not the space shuttles, but so the Apollo is the first one. So that's for the Toyota Corolla cross line. And Discovery line is for the Mazda line. And they share some production. So they, you, you keep hearing that they're both built in a complete separate factory. That's not true. Right. Some of the equipments are shared, actually, I like the it. stamping shop. Um, but I, when I observe the Corolla Cross and the Mazda CX-50 side by side, the Mazda was better built, which surprised me. Better paint finish, sorry, not the paint finish, it's the same, but the gaps and the all alignment and so forth was better. Right. So right I was surprised right. by that. Philip uh, Urschler, thank you for the 99 cents. Appreciate you. Um, if you, you know, had a message, let me know because it didn't show up for mm -hmm. some reason. So maybe just word it differently. Sometimes YouTube's a little funny. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we're not, I don't, you're just going to see typical Mazda products at the Mazda booth in LA Auto Show. The CX-90 will be revealed it's January, February, somewhere in the spring, maybe. maybe. Next, next, next it's going to be show. next year. Yeah. It's going to be next year. Next year yeah. So mm -hmm. let's step away from the Japanese manufacturers. Uh, if David, if you need some water, grab some water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to take a quick, maybe so. this is a good time to put in a commercial break. I don't know. <laughs> sure. We could do that. There you go. So are we on a commercial break? No. Well, I, I, I never know. It's just, they always recommend you oh, push the commercial I break see. button here. Yeah. And I, I click into oh, an then, ad. Oh, I see. And so I don't know like how long they're stuck in the ad for. Interesting. How do you mean the one right back then? <clears throat> so. <laughs> did, Phil, did Philip ask? He says, I'm sorry, I joined the presentation late. I have had a reservation for a new Prius since last fall. Do you have any idea when I might see, when you might see in Utah? Well, I think, uh, here's the thing. I don't know what I can say based on the North American end, 
But if you look at the the press release on the Japanese end, um, it looks like the first the first sentence essentially is the the normal priest is launching in winter. Um, so that could be December. It could be January. It could be February, right? Mm -hmm. And then plug-in hybrid models will launch in spring, but that could mean March, April, May. Yeah, I mean, these days, delivery and launch are not very clear because no. of everything that's been right. delayed. And yeah, so that's who knows when that will exactly happen. Right. But, uh, Hopefully that answered your question, but I think you're going to really enjoy the new Prius. Uh, yeah. Hopefully you can get it in the first half of next year. Yeah. Um, Bipolar uh, with another donation, Bipolar Bear. 722 dollars thank you very much you rock uh toyota hybrid lawnmower coming to the <laughs> <laughs> maybe a honda i think a honda a oh, honda no, you're, no. you're better off with honda yeah. in, in that regard um still in socal 42 i'm and david we're both <laughs> thank you we're both here in socal yeah. boom <laughs> who would have thought i know it's uh, so funny thank, thank you guys happen. for yeah thank you yeah appreciate it like the more money you give during this live stream <laughs> The more I'm going to have to buy a David drinks tonight or something before. <laughs> and I, the more you know. we're going to get together. I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there absolutely. You go. We'll have to get uh, uh, Kirk over to Vancouver where I live and maybe we'll do a live stream there at some point. But yeah, thank you so much. That's very nice of you for supporting us. Yep. Jake Krause says Nissans have the best seats. Highly recommend as rental cars. <laughs> J I know Jake, maybe personally, don't want to say too much, but... Jake's rented a, a fair share of rental cars in his life, and I believe his words have a lot of weight to them mm. when it comes to his experience with them. So, yeah, I've been, I've been, I've been comfortable in these seats. These seats are pretty good. Yeah, Honda seats are also very good. Too. Yeah, I would agree with that. Lexus seats, are, I mean, but that's luxury. We'll get to luxury in a little bit. Yeah. So I said we were talking about the Koreans. You guys uh, have excellent questions, Alejandro. Uh, thank you for being a member. Good to see oh, you in the chat. They, they, say, they didn't see an ad, so I guess whatever. Yeah. It doesn't work. So I think it might be on the replay. So when oh, they replay it, okay, yeah, I, I don't know. Okay. All right. So, guys, the Koreans are an exciting uh, conglomerate of car brands. The Hyundai Motor Group is absolutely just still killing it. New you wanna, products. You want to cover these ones first? Well, Philip sent us another 10 bucks. Yeah, thank with, you. Yeah, geez. <laughs> Philip, thank you so much. We you appreciate nice. you. And Ivan Lopez, for the five bucks, thank you so much. Uh, will the Crown Sedan come to North America? That's I'll leave this to David. I don't, I don't think so. So as you guys probably know, there are three other variations of the Crown. They show the sedan, the Crown Sport, which looks like a normal uh, SUV. And then the Crown Estate, which uh, they call a station wagon, but it looks like SUV to me. I think that the Crown Sport and the Crown Estate, both SUV or crossover type, will could could make it to North yeah. America. I really don't think they'll bring the sedan because there's no market for um, premium sedan anymore. And that sedan was designed specifically because Japanese dealers complain they really want the traditional Crown sedan. So I think they quickly came up with a... Um, a different variation of the crown to look more like sedan, but I don't think it's going to come to North America. The funny anyway, thing is, it looks cool though. If that uh, actual sedan model they came up with a rushed design, it's like the best looking one of it, them it all. It is the best looking so, one. Yeah, it looks so it's, cool. Yeah, it is what it is. That, I mean, they probably should have brought that instead of the that, uh, crossover one. But if they here, and I think I've told you this, if they brought that, it needed to be called the Lexus GS. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It can't, yeah. it cannot exist it cannot, in the Toyota exist, lineup yeah. like that. Jacob, thank you again for the two bucks. He says for the beer fund. Appreciate <laughs> you. you. <laughs> yeah, it's been, yeah. Yeah. One day I'll see you again and we'll we'll have a beer together. Um, Hyundai Ionic 6, North American premiere. So we're less than a day away. So tomorrow morning they will show us the uh, new uh, Ionic 6, which we know what, what it's the, the, the new streamliner is what they're calling it. It's going to use the same battery pack, but it has extremely low coefficient of drag at like 0.21 or something. Uh, and it's going to be um, one of the most efficient, I, I think, battery electric mm. vehicles on the market. It's going to have a really good range. And uh, I know it's going to have a lot of light shows going on. They want this vehicle to appeal more to the younger people out there uh, with their marketing with the Ionic 6. I can't wait to drive it because um, the Ionic 5 is one of my favorite electric vehicles. It's probably the best driving car for the money. Only, only complain. Yeah. Most of us have the lack of a rear wiper blade, but oh yeah, but, uh, I get it. Yeah, Onyx Six looks so different, though, right? 
Yes, it's it's, it's more of a traditional thing. sedan, yeah. more bubbly. A lot of people say, was it a J30 from Infinity back in the day? Kind of, yeah, that's kind of the point. rear end, kind of has that slopey with the tail line. Yeah, but either way, Honda is uh, kicking the butt from Toyota in terms of design, right? Like yeah. they just keep coming up with uh, yeah. really good looking cars. So that's uh, a bit of a surprise, and I think Toyota needs to step up a little bit there. Well, yeah, you'll see with the new Prius tonight that uh, yeah, they're that in one. the right direction. And, and not only the new sure. Prius tonight, maybe something else. Maybe something they, else, yeah. which we can't talk about. Can't say, <laughs> can't say anything. Um, Ionic 5N, I wouldn't be surprised if it's also at the LA Auto Show because mm. that's going to be the future of their performance cars in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, unless they go to hydrogen, which I'm, I'm all for the Koreans doing hydrogen because we know Honda and Toyota are doing hydrogen and BMW is doing hydrogen. So mm. um, got to have some diversity in power yeah. trends. We don't want to uh, put all our eggs in one basket necessarily. Yeah, definitely. So um, I don't know when we're going to see a new Santa Fe, but there's a lot of spy shots going out there and it looks yeah, like it's a Land, Cru getting... uh, Land Rover Discovery. It kind of looks like I think that Land Cruiser Discovery look is kind of influencing a whole bunch of different other brands. Yeah. I'm hearing maybe even Toyota cars will look more like Land Rover cars in the future. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that'll be kind of interesting. I guess I don't know if that's going to be at the show or not. I, I don't think I don't so, think but so. it's just fun yeah. to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, the new uh, Refresh Palisade, I've already mm -hmm. seen a couple on the streets already. Mm -hmm. So they're out there. Their customers are already enjoying mm -hmm. them. Uh, the Palisade got a lot better looking, mm -hmm. and I feel like yeah. this is a good transition into sister company Kia. Yes, because yeah. the the Telluride used to look better than the Palisade, and they both got a refresh and they flipped roles. Palisade now mm. looks better, in my opinion. That's true. Uh, than the Telluride after the refresh. I think I'm driving the Palisade in a in a couple of weeks in Vancouver, so I look forward to that. We have a Highlander also in one of our fleet, and so it'll be good to compare the two. Pi Polar Bear again. Ah, there Throwing you go. Throwing us another two bones. <laughs> Any news Thanks. on a rumored GR Sienna or a Sienna Prime? Now, I've been asking for a Sienna Prime ever since, like, the RAV4 Prime came out. Mm. It would be the ultimate car for me. Like, I I love the idea of the Prius Prime. Uh, I just don't know if, like, because I drive a lot in my minivan, too. But if I had mm. a minivan that had plug-in range, yeah. I, I would never need to drive my, my current Prius. I just drive the minivan yeah. everywhere and just rack up miles on That's electric, true. you know. Exactly, but it's not going to happen. I don't think. I not think, for a long time. I think time. it'll be uh, it'll just become fully electric minivan at some point. Uh, and... I don't want. I don't want one. Of those. <laughs> I want. I want I a Sienna but, Prime but, with fifty miles yeah, of plug-in range. Yeah. Because then you don't have to worry about uh, uh, range anxiety, right? When I, if I want to go to Disney. I don't have to think exactly. about, oh, okay, I got a plan on stopping yeah. and charging yeah. with a full van full, a kid, full, a van full of kids. Yeah. You don't want to have to stop uh, as as much as possible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so for that same reason, you're not going to see a GRC. And I'm, no, in Japan, they do have a GR Sport versions of a, their minivans. The Noah the Boxy. They're, yeah, Noah yeah. Boxy, which is all new. Yeah. But no, we're not going to see that in yeah. America, I don't think. Yeah. Bipolar. Is that done more? more no, 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 no. He get, oh, uh, yes, Mark answered that one. Yeah. Mark sent us. I think this might have been the Mark saying he was sad about. Uh, I made him sad earlier. If, if this is okay. the same Mark, I, I'm sorry, but thank you for the ten bucks. Yeah. Um, he says, "When will the Prius be revealed tonight?" Tell us, Kirk. It is six thirty. Six thirty is the embargo left, and we're physically there. Mm -hmm. That time, that's all I can say. I think. Right? Yeah, yeah. Nine so, nine thirty Eastern time. Right. I don't know if Toyota USA is doing any live stream. I don't think I don't, so. I don't know. I was hoping they would, but they yeah. might not. I heard that they might, but I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't seen anything on the web yet which means they might not, but if I'm allowed to do it, I'll live stream tonight and then hopefully Kirk can help me out a little bit because I haven't done a live stream like outside my home office before. So we'll see. I have no idea about the Wi-Fi and stuff. You know, I've never done a live stream outside of my laptop or my desktop at home. Like, I don't, I don't know. So, we'll have to, we'll have to, you know, we have could, we could figure, two of us could figure it out, okay. I guess, if you, if you want to do yeah. a live stream tonight. Um, so yeah, thanks to the 10 bucks and yeah, mark your account, put an alarm on your phone or whatever, 6.30 PM, PM Pacific, 9.30 yeah. Eastern. If you're somewhere in between, you, you, you know what to do. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, policy question from Rick, any word out there of a plug-in hybrid model in the future? Mm -hmm. This is a big mystery to me. Yeah. I don't know where Hyundai's going mm -hmm. with their big vehicle engines. Right. Because what yeah. they, it currently has is the 3.8 liter in the Palisade That's right. V6. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, an engineering perspective, they don't like uh, plug-in hybrid of uh, large models, generally speaking. I know Europeans do it. Yeah. But just because of the efficiency of the weight versus the uh, range. Yeah. So the bigger the car, the, the bigger battery you have to have. Uh, which means it's kind of offsets each other, right? Because then the weight yep. is increased. The, the so, weight just keeps going yeah. up. Yeah. So Akio Toyota made it very clear that putting uh, either a plug-in hybrid into a large vehicle or making the large vehicles fully electric is not ideal. He, he doesn't like it. He doesn't think it makes sense. Uh, I shouldn't I say it... that. I shouldn't say Let me reward it. He doesn't think it's a good idea to put large batteries in large car, which offset the weight. Um, so that's, some, that's why you don't see it in the larger cars. But I don't know. At some point, I mean, Ford has lightning, right? Well, so, Akio showed us a, a concept battery electric Tacoma. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it's going to so happen, but, the but it's, not, it's, not, it's not priority. You know, they're going to push it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. They'd rather put um, these these plug-in hybrid battery packs in the Prius, in exactly. the RAV4, yeah, exactly. in, in the Benza, the Lexus NX, yeah. the RX, the K it's platform normal. and C platform. Yeah, exactly. So... But the K platform is it can be stretched to pretty big big vehicles. We'll find out maybe later this year, and maybe they put yeah, a, yeah. a plug in hybrid in something bigger. Um, but yeah, with with the Koreans, I just don't know what they're going to do um, with their larger vehicles. And you know, I think they might just go fully electric because if we look at the EV seven uh, or the, sorry, the EV nine and Ionic seven, I always get a mix up mm. um, from Hyundai and Kia. It's, yeah. They're going battery electric with their large SUVs. Right. So yep, I are. just I just don't think that they are happen, interested right. in hybridizing their big vehicles. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, they're all going fully electric anyway. So I was mm -hmm. sitting down with the Genesis director yesterday, and he said, by 2025, they're going to stop investing into ICE or gasoline engines. And that's parent company Hyundai? Uh, well, he was referring to Genesis at the time. Okay. Uh, and then by, so this is for Genesis now, but for 2030, he's going to be fully electric, right? So, uh, but I think when he said no more investment to ICE 2025, I, he was talking from a Genesis perspective, but I wouldn't be surprised if that referred to the whole company. Wow, that's yeah. that's a powerful we're, statement. We're not, we're not quite sure what, if he meant that, that or not, but. Okay. So we are getting new Seltos. Uh, that's what mm. this con uh, countdown is for. Less than, so there's lots of countdowns going on. We have one for the Impreza. Uh, we have, we just had one earlier. Gosh, I already lost it. Uh, oh, the Ionic 6, mm -hmm. and we got another one for the Seltos here, and there's this is just some of them. There's there's going to be other brands there that I don't talk about. David does from time to time on his channel, the the Europeans, namely. Yeah. So yeah. Porsche will have a 911 Dakar. I think it's unveiled to the media today. I hope to, I don't know if they're going to have it at the show though. I'm not sure yet. I hope so. But I like the Porsche brand as well. So that's one. Yeah. If you guys don't know. It's one of David's <laughs> favorite brands is Porsche. They, they were they survived the, the the crisis many years ago because Porsche got help from a former Toyota um, manufacturing veterans. So there's a lot of Toyota nests in the Porsche manufacturing system. So that's why I like them. But uh, I think someone asked me what happened to my IS five hundred Lexus IS five hundred. So I did sell that and I traded it to for a Porsche Macan GTS. So I know you guys were probably very upset at me that I, <laughs> I, I bought a, a non-Japanese brand, but I needed a SUV, something that's fun to drive, yeah. and it's about the same price with Lexus, so that's the why. The IS500, to make it great, in my opinion, you got to do some stuff to it, and it starts with the exhaust. Yeah, the, but the, yeah, the steering, the steering is a, the the brake, brake, something the brakes, is not right. And the steering, and the, the gas pedal has that weird two-stage. Two two, two-stage, yeah. Apparently, that's also... On the LLC, someone said, but I didn't notice it when I drove the LLC. I'll have to pay attention because I'm having I'm, I'm too busy flying through the gears and listening to the exhaust and the LLC to notice <laughs> any any small drawbacks or shortcomings that vehicle has. Yeah, but I don't think it because I would have noticed it for sure yeah. if, if you just floor it once. But that two stage thing on IS five hundred is really strange. I and but more than that, the steering feel is just too light. There's nothing wrong with the car itself. And actually, it's very agile. It's very flat around mm -hmm. the corners, but the steering is very numb. Mm -hmm. Typical Toyota mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. It lacks sensation from the road. And, you know, for the price, for that much money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. Better, better options out there. Yeah, so sorry about that, guys. The, v, the V8, though, is why you would buy that car. Yeah, the so, engine is phenomenal. No yeah, question about yeah. that. Um, JX Mar says, when does the Corolla Cross Hybrid go on sale? This is a, a moving goalpost thing. 
That vehicle I was supposed to drive in Nashville alongside the Crown, it wasn't ready then. It's not ready now. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it's going to be at the auto show uh, tomorrow or, or this week. It's a big question mark on the mm -hmm. Corolla Cross Hybrid. Mm -hmm. So just stay tuned, I guess, guys. When I know, I'll be able to tell you. Um, let's see here. Anything else? Oh, we got a refresh Telluride that'll be there. Oh, the new Nero will be there. I've heard mm -hmm. pretty good things yeah. about the Nero. Um, cause you have fully electric, good. you he get the plug good. in and the yeah. hybrid and, uh, yeah. there's, you know, plenty of, of, uh, grades in there for every single budget. It seems like so, and it looks way better. It looks That's way the most better. important thing. Yeah, it looks oh better. my gosh. Yeah. The old Nero was the actually. biggest snooze fest ever. Yeah, I agree. All right. The luxury category, you know, guys, I get excited for anything, uh, in the, in the luxury category. Let's start with Genesis. Mm -hmm. David, last night, tell us about your experience with Genesis. Right. So we had a quite a, a fascinating reveal last night at a, I guess it's a private home that so belongs to someone mm -hmm. in Malibu, right, right on the beach. Like fifty million at least, probably. Probably, right? probably. I don't know who knows how who much knows? that thing yeah. costs. But apparently, one of the neighbor, like right beside, it, is uh, Pierce Brosnan's house. Oh no That's way! What they said. James so, Bond. Yeah, I didn't see him, but oh okay. Anyway, um, so they uh, revealed uh, this uh, concept car, which is part of the the trio of concept cars that they've shown before. It's called the X Concept. It's a convertible this time, fully mm -hmm. electric, mm -hmm. and uh, it's got a signature um, Genesis Genesis dual. What's it called? Dual line to byline. Yeah, I don't yeah, know what yeah. You call there it. we go. Yeah. So I mean, honestly. You know, when BMW used to design beautiful cars, like the old 8 Series, it has that kind of um, classic European heritage look, which I, I think is just amazing to look at. It looks even better in person, oh, I'm honestly, because sure. it's pretty yeah. big. It's not a small car. It looks pretty boaty. Yeah, and it kind of reminds me of like the 80s luxury cars. Yeah, exactly. It looks really fantastic. Is it hardtop then? Uh, I don't know. Actually, they never... I guess here they're showing us a hard top. It looks like a hard Maybe top. Maybe it's a hard top, but they only showed us with the top down there. That and is... they had a pretty big splash to showcase this one. The designers, the, the executives were all there from Genesis. And uh, we took a lot of pictures with that. And obviously it may never happen. Something like this may never happen, but the design theme and the design character right. of this will carry over to other Genesis models. Right. And uh, so, you know, they, they hired away some of the best designers from the world, you know, from BMW and Audi. They, they're all working at the Hyundai group now. And so you can tell their design influence is it's coming beautiful. through strong, right? It's beautiful. It looks really good. Well, here's the yeah. thing. It's like they have three of these X concepts now. Three, that's right. Yeah. I think this is a, a good direction of where they're going to go in, as a brand. Maybe not exactly, but mm -hmm. a lot of these styling cues and... And body lines, like, and, and maybe even wheel designs. Because the wheel, maybe those wheel wheels that kind of popped know, out. Yeah. What I think is, you know, curb rash. Those yeah. wheels are gonna get destroyed. That's true. <laughs> That's but true. man, are they? They look great. Really cool. Yeah, they look cool. Yeah. Kind of a three D effect. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I mean, they take chances. They take some more risk. Take that, a uh, you know, Japanese automakers are too conservative. They're way. Yeah. yeah. And when they do take a chance, we end up with the crown. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, uh, Peru. I'm sorry, yeah. to keep on ham ham oh my on gosh. One, but I can't the Prius is a bit of a chance, Prius though. Is good. Yes, Here's yes, the thing: sorry. it's like, why I'm can't so they? Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah, why can't they? Yeah, exactly. And some are swings and a misses, and like the Prius yeah. is a swing and a grand slam. Exactly, Prius is a great, great. The Prius design. is now a, a vehicle amazing. that people are want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no but, one wanted fourth gen. Yeah, and it started losing popularity after the third gen. Yeah, the previous gen was kind of radical looking but i think no one understood that design theme mm -hmm. um but uh, yeah the prius is kind of like following the theme set by the uh, mirai right mirai is the first one to showcase more of a european flavor and then now the prius got the kind of flowing swoopy lines yeah. then so hopefully that means more good designs to come i, I think so I and mean, we think, look at yeah. the you know the battery electric presentation last year most of those designs are pretty good. It looks pretty good. Yeah. A bipolar bear. Another two bucks. <laughs> You've got a funny name there, by the way. Man, I got I got like a wallet full of two, $2 <laughs> bills right now. We'll have More to take, live streams in we'll the future. We'll have to take you out for a coffee sometime. Yeah, bipolar, bipolar bear, well, you know, <laughs> we'll have to take you out for a coffee. I have no idea drink. where you're located, but anyway. <laughs> two bucks. Yes, more live streams. We're both busy yeah. people. Uh, 
David's baby is his real company, not the YouTube <laughs> channel necessarily. So he runs his own consulting business. Yeah. You know, my I, real job is helping my wife raise our four beautiful daughters. So like, this is still like our side gig, that's isn't true. it? Yeah, we still got other lives to deal with. <laughs> yeah. But but hopefully tonight I can do a live stream and then you get you guys can see Kirk again and plus whoever else is going to be there. Yeah, a lot of YouTubers will be there. Yeah, yeah and yeah. yeah, I'll get to introduce David to a lot of YouTubers. It'll be fun. Perfect, yeah. Okay. Um, any questions in here? I guess we can. Did we miss anything? Oh, Genesis. Oh yeah. Uh, other, other than this, I think they will have the GV70 EV at the event. I could be wrong, but that's what I've heard. Mm, I heard. But I heard the same thing. That's a vehicle that'll be built in Alabama, right? That's right. Yeah, the first uh, Genesis to be produced in North America. So it's a big um, deal. It's a huge deal. It's yes, like yeah. the Lexus RX in around 2002 or whatever exactly. going online in Cambridge. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I like the G. I like the GV70 in general before before yeah. it became a yeah. convert uh, electric car. Yeah. So it'll be really yeah. fast. And I just I just drove the G70 uh, rear wheel drive 3.3 turbo. I think it's fun to drive, it's, right? It's fun. It gets a little, a little uh, tail happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that, uh, have you driven driven the G80 electrified yet? Yes. So yeah, yeah. Dave and I ha have talked about this off off camera on yeah. our private top secret confidential phone calls <laughs> that. Uh, we yeah, we'd everything. be in deep trouble if you guys heard what we were talking about. <laughs> but we both have driven the G80 electrified vehicle. Uh, it's around eighty thousand dollars here in the United yeah. States. It's the best EV I've driven. Now you've driven the Taycan. I've driven the Taycan. Uh, that's yeah. a little bit more expensive. Right. And it can get very expensive. But it's a different car, though. I mean, Taycan is clearly more sportier. G80 totally. much more luxury. Electric. It's a luxury sedan. Yeah. But if I compare the G80 electrified to more traditional cars like Lexus LS or um, BMW, even 7 Series or Mercedes S-Class, that G80 is shockingly good. Like I was just blown no away. No pun intended, right? No, no, no yeah, pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, it was really good. Like The, the design on the inside, the materials, yeah. A+. Plus. Um, exterior design is an A+, plus as well, yeah. on the, on the yeah. re redesigned G80. And also surprising, the steering uh, feedback had just the right amount it's of great. weight. It's like, and it's a fully electric car, so usually they mess up on the steering. Mm -hmm. But this one almost felt like a hydraulic steering, right? Like it had just the right amount I would, of feedback. I could see that. Yeah, yeah like, like almost not quite as good as Taycan, but kind of Porsche-like, European-like. It's with sure. its accuracy. Very accurate, yeah. good feedback. I had fun throwing. I mean, I don't have a lot of turns in Florida, so... I, I, a few times I got to turn it and I'm like, it okay, good. it actually, it'll, it'll do what you want it to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Even though it still has a very soft mm -hmm. and compliant ride. Um, and it's fast as hell. We, 360 horsepower yeah. doesn't sound like much. It's I think fast. That's what it, it's, it's really fast. It feels fast. Whenever you want zero to 60, four and a half seconds. No, yeah. over and over. That thing is a bit of a sleeper for sure. And the rain, my estimated range was yeah. obnoxious. It was yeah. way higher than what the uh, manufacturer oh, really? or the EPA was. Oh, really? Wow. It was like something like 360 miles of range. Well, you got sunny weather there. That's I got just... sunny weather, <laughs> flat roads, and I, I had AC to like the lowest setting. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And so, interesting. Yeah. That's that's the inner, inner Prius owner inside of me. We have bipolar again. Again. <laughs> He's going to be broke by the time we're done. We might have to close the stream so yeah. you know he has money to take care of himself and his family. Bipolar Bear, 722. <laughs> Tell Toyota we want an extended length version of the Sienna for more legroom in the second and third row, more storage capacity. Mm. Yeah. I don't think it would ever happen. It the van happen. market's just so small. Yeah, yeah, it's so specialized. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Japan people love the vans. We have the but they're our, smaller vans. Oh, yeah, and the mini right? minivans. But uh, yeah, they have really cool yeah, K, vans. Yeah, K-car minivans, and then you have, like, no one boxy. Exactly, yeah. And then you have, like, the Alpha. Uh, the Alpha art is just so and cool. And then you have, like, the High Ace, the Pro Ace, yeah. Grand Ace. You and have, like, and people it's love a van, the van culture. They love the van. It's a van culture. Like, celebrities, instead of being driven around the back of a Mercedes S-Class, they'd rather be in Alpha art. You know, they just really well, like that. Well, that's why, van. like in China, they have the Lexus, Lexus. LM. Yeah, LM. Yeah, yeah no, that thing yeah. is okay, two hundred fifty grand or whatever. Yeah, it's crazy. Bipolar Bear says, "Sorry for donating so much money. Here's another two dollars." <laughs> you, that's you're so funny. hilarious. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> oh, he says he'll stop. Uh, oh my goodness, <laughs> yeah. you're too generous, Bipolar. <laughs> you gotta come over to my channel sometime. Yeah, yeah, head up, please. Pump up David's wallet when he does a live stream <laughs> next time. Um. Here we go. Moving on from Genesis, 
they they do electric here okay i have one last thing about genesis <laughs> uh, i've also driven driven the gv 60 fully electric right that I'm, does zero to I 60 four too. seconds yeah flat Super whenever fast. you want um really fast but i think the value play like the interior is not that much nicer than ionic 5 mm -hmm. and in fact like other than the really nice headliner you get in those gen like I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's a worthy. Up, I don't think it's a worthy upgrade over the Ionic Five. It does look better right. though. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Uh, I mean, it has better performance, more power, and so forth. Absolutely. But, uh, but I like the design of the Ionic Five uh, better, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, it's personal taste. Yeah, personal yeah. taste. Yeah. Okay. Very so. cool. Um, but what I was say, trying to say mm -hmm. is that on on the, the Genesis vehicles. Um, with the turbocharged engines, mm -hmm. they have a really strong engine braking downshift when you're when you're slowing the vehicle to a stop. And every oh, single on one, the GV60, did you say? Not the GV60. Oh, which, which one you're talking? All about? their gasoline models. Oh, gasoline cars. Yeah, yeah. So when you're slowing down, you feel the engine cut in or the the uh, transmission downshift, and then you get like mm. thrust thrust thrusted forward with additional braking that you didn't put on the brake pedal. Mm. So it's hard to predict the brake pedal on all of their gasoline engines mm -hmm. and when you get into their electric cars it's a it's a, almost a perfect brake response mm. it's very very interesting good. so the on the uh, genesis gasoline cars did you say yeah i didn't notice that everyone wonder... notices different things yeah you know wonder... i've talked to other genesis mm -hmm. no owners that like they're like i why are you even complain about that that's not something i it's like but for me it, it yeah. really upsets it, my my predictability wonder, when i'm driving yeah i wonder if it happens more like in the sport mode or some other it doesn't matter what mode. mode it is interesting i yeah. have to take a notice of that next time i drive yeah the g70 when i just drove it at 20 mile an hour it downshifts into like first really? gear and you just lurch forward mm. without touching the brake any more than you have been so, i have to book some genesis car now and yeah see. that's really the only gripe i have with genesis cars so that's mm -hmm. that's pretty good praise all right moving on there are mm -hmm. other uh asian japanese asian automakers out here the japanese are left in the luxury segment because genesis is the only one from junior get going no, no, I'm, okay. I'm fine. Okay. I'm just checking to see if there's any other thing that we missed on the stuff. So you can keep going. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. Well, I'm going to go insert an ad and then we're going to keep moving. Um, we're, we're going to talk about Acura. We just talked about the uh, TLX Type S PMC. That'll probably be there um, at the LA Auto Show. They'll have an NSX Type S. So mm -hmm. this will be one of your last chances to see, to see one. It. Yeah um one of these days maybe we'll get to buy it <laughs> a type a type it's s just, nsx no, or just never. yeah good luck. Never, we'll never those will those are going to be yeah. high ticket items they're what they made 350 of them mm -hmm. um they won't have the zdx there because that vehicle isn't announced yet that would be the fully electric right. car coming out yep. with general motors but they will have um the precision i'm assuming they'll have the accurate precision ev concept mm -hmm. precision right. Yeah, I think I said it right. I think that's, that's the right name. Yeah, Precision the, EV Concept. And that, which, which, which for kind of foreshadows or whatever the word is. The ZDX and ZDX other upcoming right. products. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. um, I was in New York to debut that vehicle for the channel, mm -hmm. so make sure to check out that, that vi uh, video. Um, Byron, he says, cheers, drink Hefeweizen beers. I love Hefeweizens. <laughs> They're very um, light yet sweet at the same time. I really enjoy Hefeweizen. So thank you for the 10 bucks. Uh, appreciate you. And uh, where are you from? Are you from Germany? Um, I do like my German beers, my Belgian beers as well. Do you have a, a, a beverage of choice you enjoy? Uh, I'm kind of semi-allergic to alcohol, so I don't oh, drink okay. too much. Gotcha. I'm a hot chocolate kind of person. <laughs> Sweets, anything sweet. Actually, you know, in Vancouver, the West Coast, we're big on um, bubble tea. Do you know bubble oh, tea? Oh, yeah, yeah, no bubble like tea. Like a boba bubble tea, which is... Yeah, it's Vietnamese bubble tea? No, actually, it comes from Taiwan. Oh, it's Taiwan. Yeah, so I'm from Japan, but this is such a huge uh, thing now that everyone in Japan uh, Japan and the West Coast of Canada, they all drink bubble tea oh, with bubble all tea. kinds of stuff mixed in. So we, we, nice. don't, we don't, there's not too much of that here in the U.S., but... That's next time you come to Vancouver, I'll treat you to a bubble tea. I would, I would appreciate that. I like matcha. Do there they put go. matcha tea in yeah, those? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would really yeah, enjoy definitely. that. But going back to Germany, I'm going to um, visit all the German factories in March. Holy cow! Yeah, you guys can join me. Um, it's an open invitation, so I'm gonna go to Porsche factory, and then the, uh, in this in Stuttgart, that's their head office. Go to their head office, mm -hmm. corporate uh, global. Uh, showroom 
and then go to Mercedes, Audi, and maybe BMW. So BMW is in Munich, so we have to then move over to Munich, which is like a, a three or four hour uh, train ride. And then we're flying over to Italy to go to Lamborghini and Pagani. Holy smokes. That is, yeah. How long is that trip going to be? A week. It's just a week. It's very short. A week? Yeah. Maybe I can. Maybe. I mean, I don't cover those manufacturers, but I would always, I've always wanted to go back to uh, my ancestor's fatherland, essentially, oh, yeah, Germany. Yeah. So Maybe some, one of the viewers will donate a ticket for you. <laughs> donate the ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would appreciate that, but so, it would be cool. Yeah. Be so cool. if you guys want to come, follow me. I, it's Anyone can join me, so... Um, hey, I gotta answer Jimmy's question though. He, Jimmy is always on my channel. Oh, such, Jimmy Amico, yeah. Such amazing thing. Yes, so, Jimmy, yeah. We appreciate you, Jimmy. Jimmy, you're, you're such all, a nice dude. Yeah, you've got like the biggest heart in the world and you're always <laughs> saying so much so beautiful things about yeah. anything. So we He's really appreciate it. always pouring out kindness. I know. So you're he, too kind. He has a question, I think. He's like, do you have any news on the 2024 2025 LC convertible and coupe? Do you mm. know when the last year will be manufactured in 2029? maybe yeah that's a good question there's not very much news on the lc just no. because they produce so little yep and uh so they're not gonna make any changes to it uh, other than all these rumors about electric sports car from lexus that may or may not LFR, happen in the future what LFR, people are but, saying yeah but the current version lc I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll carry on for a few more years yeah um i don't know about beyond 2025 ish because that's when lexus will begin to convert many models to electric cars, right? So I don't know. I would love to buy one. It's still very expensive, but there's some used one here and there. So mm -hmm. I did think about selling the IS500 and buying the LC, like a used one. Yep. But it's hard to find a good good used one at a good price. So that, that didn't, that didn't yeah. happen, but maybe I'll sell the Porsche Macan GTS at some point and then flip back to Lexus, <laughs> which you guys will be happy about. So buy Polar Bear must be someone that he, i might be someone i know because uh he says fairy nectar ipa so it could be one of my acquaintances uh, oh, really? from back in nebraska oh interesting that's so a local beer in nebraska okay okay there you so go may, maybe there's a secret connection there may, maybe this person's trolling me maybe <laughs> maybe uh that, did we answer yeah i guess we answered jimmy's question there uh yeah, Boba is everyone in LA. That's true. Yeah, I think we call Boba's it Boba. In, Boba's like the the fad right now. Yeah, hopefully it stays fad. stays yeah. around. Yeah. All right. Um, what else do we have? So Acura, they'll also have Integra there. Don't expect Integra Type S maybe until next year, yeah. like a, a full mm. year from now. Maybe it's hard to say. I did a rendering on it though. Well, oh, you did. Yeah, in Integra, Integra Type, type S. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. very cool. Yeah, Type Type S, right? Yeah, it'll be yeah. the Type yeah. S. Yeah, the Honda, the Civic's got the Type R, right. and the Integra will be the Type yeah. S. I'll send that to you. So, yeah. it, it it's like ninety nine percent coming the Integra Type S. We just don't know a lot of the details. I'm assuming it's just going to be uh, just a nicer version of the Type, type R. R. I yeah, mean, basically, use your imagination. Yeah. That's what uh, uh, like the A spec tech package in america is of the integra versus like the civic si exactly. it's just a nicer yeah. version of the civic that'd SI. be a really nice car to get because i really like the integra driving it it's a great all-around really like car everyday yeah. car yeah especially yeah. if you get a manual but the cvt i get it i get it um last year toyota's oh. gas engines never they'll never, never. yeah never. yeah they'll never they'll yeah they'll, they'll hold on even more than honda even though yeah. honda makes more money off of their engines than toyota toyota won't give it up unless it's yeah. forced from because them. you guys have to remember toyota owns like something like over 400 businesses or companies in globally but just even in japan they own many yeah many of the suppliers that that people know then so i think they all are owned the by ones. toyota or mm -hmm. partly owned by toyota and so you've got imagine this huge group of companies that are all tied to ice or gasoline cars and you know the minute that a company goes to full electric these companies will either be obsolete or you have to produce something else right and so toyota has responsibility to take care of all this huge supply base mm -hmm. so they will do anything to keep some kind of engine going mm -hmm. it could be synthetic fuel e-fuel they call it or yep. it could be hydrogen fuel but they want to keep some kind of moving engine components alive and well for mm -hmm. a long time to come so maybe it might not be gasoline engine but i think engines are here to stay at least for toyota they can't, I can't imagine them. Uh, I can't imagine yeah, a world in where for them. I still can't imagine a world where Honda isn't putting engines in their cars. Yeah, I agree. even though they say they they won't have 
uh, anything other than elect fully electric or fuel cell by 2040. Mm -hmm. Still hard to believe. Um, mm. All right, let's keep moving then. Infinity. Well, let's. Yeah, they'll have the QX60 there. I mean, that's their newest vehicle. They'll have the mm. QX55, which is a handsome crossover. Uh, QX80 redesign. It's like. It's like it's like the uh, GX or the Forerunner. It's yeah. min those large Japanese body on frame vehicles. There aren't that many. No, there's not. But the their product cycles are so long. Well, I heard the rumors that over the next couple of years it might get changed over. Yeah, um, I'm it driving will. the I'm driving the Nissan Armada this week, which is love it. Basically identical to QX80. And you know what? I like it better than the new Lexus LX600. Can I would you, agree with that. Can you believe that? I it's agree. actually I, way I better. Agree. No, I agree with you. It's just a beautiful truck. It has the kind of velvety, refined oh, feel gosh. that only is possible with the big V8 with the body on the frame. It feels timeless. It feels timeless. Like yeah. it's amazing. It's half the price of a, a fully equipped LX600. Mm -hmm. Like I'm thinking, this is another sleeper model, right? No one it talks is. about buying no one talks Ar to, like, Armada. I, it's great. I just reviewed it on the channel. I don't know this past summer uh with oh, yeah? my family and my gosh it's we really just good. had a hell of a time yeah. in that, that yeah. truck it's a beautiful truck. it's great and it can tow like a house yeah that's exactly. a, it's, it's a tank it's it's what land cruiser used to be you know so the old yeah the, the the 5.7 liter exactly it's the, very it's very close very to old close. land cruiser yeah. feel so that's this is around for at least i don't know year or two yeah you guys should buy it i i, I even i thought about buying it. i like that so much for the price it's fantastic i like it a lot anyway jimmy where... says he's moving to florida in 2023 oh, really? yeah we could have a meetup oh okay there we go that'd be fun where are you now jimmy i don't actually know where you are even but we'll have to meet up for sure or you have to come to west coast i'll get kirk to fly over i have to use my aeroplane point like lots of points i'll fly kirk and his family over for vacation we'll, go, we'll go fishing That'll and jimmy fun. you can join us maybe bipolar can join us too yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are funny uh but yeah let's prices i don't think the previous prices will be announced tonight no 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 we won't have prices no we won't have prices yeah. or availability um it's packaging is uh maybe maybe announced wink wink and that's actually meaning that the vehicle's gonna be available very very soon right yeah so um leo the short guy one of the moderators on the channel leo leo took off he had a hiatus or a sabbatical i didn't see him for like half of a year maybe longer and he came back he's back in full force so leo the short guy back on the channel <laughs> thanks i don't know if i i don't know if i've said it but i want to thank everyone for just coming out to this live stream as we're getting close to wrapping it up here we have the grand finale uh, finishing up with Lexus and then what, uh, whatever else David's excited for because he talks more about uh, non-Asian cars. Mm. So, talking about Lexus here. Mm -hmm. The new RX will be here in every single yeah. flavor, I'm assuming. Yes. Just about. Yeah. So, I drove that. I haven't done a review on it, so I'm really behind with my videos. I apologize for that. But you drove it. I drove it. We'll have to share some thoughts later on. Um, but none of us have driven the RZ yet. Obviously, that's not officially out yet. So... I look forward to that. Um, Leo got kicked off YouTube. Oh. You could just create a new account, right? You can create a new account. Right, yeah. just a different yeah, email. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, good, good to see you back reinstated. Um, hopefully you didn't hurt anyone's feelings <laughs> <laughs> along the way. Uh, yeah, let's see oh, here. We're still going LB to says he used to live in Sarasota and Bradenton. It's a great okay. area. Yeah, it's good. My, area, my aunt lives in that area. Back to Lexus. I think there's a new IS coming. You did a video on it, right? I could talk all day about the IS. I know. Yeah. I know. It's a and big it, mystery. Yeah, it's a right big now. mystery. And if it looks anything like the best car magazine or rendering, it'll, it'll, it'll be just like what's yeah. going on with the Prius. I think so too. Yeah. Um, yeah. With it. I'm sorry again, I sold my IS 500. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably people will not forgive me for that one. So I'm, I'm hearing like on the electric end of the IS, I'm hearing triple motor yeah, with torque yeah. factoring in the rear. I think I heard, uh, I heard Audi already does here. that with their e-trons, for yeah, example. Do, so it, yeah. it wouldn't be any, it would be novel for a Toyota. I mean, mm -hmm. look at the, even the NSX that's being discontinued. It's a, it's a hybrid that has dual motors up front for one for each wheel. So it's nothing new, but it's new for Toyota. We, we, mm -hmm. we often talk that Toyota is not much of an innovator oftentimes. 
Yeah, we always say... They're a refiner say, of technology. Like, we talk about Toyota a lot in the business strategy course I teach. Oh, okay. And I always say that Toyota is um, on purpose a follower. You know, they don't, they're, not, they're not trying to be a follower because, because they don't want to innovate. It's not that they do innovation, but they don't want to be a risk taker. So they want to wait for someone else to try something really brand new. And if it takes off and it's proven, then Toyota will jump in full force and they'll catch up and actually beat the competition, right? That's, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the come from behind strategy and people are saying, oh, they're like, this is what Toyota does. Like, yeah, they're behind in BEVs, but that's that's on, on purpose. On purpose, yeah. yeah. They want to see wh whoever wants to take a chance first with new models, new technology, let them be. And if it falls apart, then they don't invest into that technology, right? Mm -hmm. So they're they're the smart one. They're carefully analyzing, figuring out what works, what doesn't sell, and then they're jumping full force once the system is somewhat mm -hmm. proven, and then they go full in, right? As, as they have done recently with uh, with the battery stuff. Yeah. So. Now the the IS back to the IS. So. I've even heard that it's going to be on a, a flexible platform where they can mm. have an internal combustion engine in it and then also make a battery electric. We've seen it in other vehicles, right? Lexus mm. UX, uh, CHR. Yeah. I mean, the Crown is going to have a battery electric variant. So it's yeah. nothing, nothing, That's nothing new, nothing new. Yeah. They're not, they have to have a gasoline car for IS for, for Japan and other, other mm -hmm. markets. So, you know, it'll be interesting if IS will come out i don't know who not, probably not next year i don't think maybe two years 2025 2025 i think it was 2025 yeah, 2025. yeah that's our guess anyway yeah uh but what are you going to see a new rx you'll see the rz 450e mm. there and that's another vehicle that just keeps getting pushed out yeah uh, due to out. the issues with the uh etnga platform that's another discussion on its own the wheels falling off the bz4x that's fixed but there's also a lot of controversy going on with the um coming out of scandinavia right now right. have you heard about this right where toyota won't um communicate the net battery capacity yeah yeah right. and uh about that it's it's getting kind of messy but mm. we'll see what happens out mm. of it i mean it doesn't look good for toyota because their their ev is underperforming all the competition mm -hmm. even underperforming a lot of their mm -hmm. uh estimations so there's lots of pressure for sure on toyota right now yeah to get something sorted out right so anyways rz450 mm -hmm. might be at this la auto show um mm -hmm. tx that's GX. coming next year and gx yeah. next year so, so i did the rendering on a tx kind of hybrid of a rx combined with uh, RZ. I'm not quite convinced it's going to look exactly like that, right. but that's my best guess. Um, but the TX, I mean, it's, I mean, I can't say it's confirmed, but it's from our perspective, it's confirmed, right? To come from our opinion, it, it will come out for sure out of yeah. an Indiana plant yeah. that will produce the Grand Highlander. Not yeah. much on Grand Highlander these days, but you'll be a twin model to yeah. Grand Highlander. They'll come out roughly uh, the same time, same I think. Time, yeah. yeah. Should be end of fall 2023, I think. Yeah. Around that time, yeah, less than a year away, the the Grand Highlander and mm -hmm. the TX should be on the market, and that's a really important model for Lexus, right? Dealers have been asking for th proper three row, like a, just a big family haul. Yeah, the big, MDX or, and the big. Q7s, and then you have the X uh, X7, and then you have the GLS. All those luxury three row big SUVs have been wiping the floor with Lexus. Yeah, GX is not GX is. It's three row, but that's like an emergency three exactly. row. It's not a proper three row. Um, and then the LX is just too expensive, and, and no one, it is no one, small, and, and no one can get it anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's it's vaporware. It's impossible to get. So that thing. they need a built in America large three row vehicle. It's more important for Lexus, I think, than it is for Toyota because they have the Sequoia. Yeah. Um, and and the Sienna minivan. So they have a lot of other options than the Toyota in, but for, for Lexus, this vehicle should have been in the lineup mid 2000s. Yeah, exactly. Probably not that long yeah. after the RX was taken off. Yeah. And then it took okay. a long time to get to this. It's point. it's really yeah. unacceptable and it's yeah. very short sighted of them. Yeah, I know. So But it's gonna be here and it should do well when it, it does. It, yeah, and it'll have a, a good amount of powertrains, tempting powertrains. Mm -hmm. Can't say much more than that. But I'm more excited about the new GX, which is still not around, not not coming for a while. 
Um, but, but you aren't you getting one? Yeah. So uh, the the news I haven't told anyone yet, but I'm going to probably sell my Tundra TRD Pro and switch over to Lexus GX, the current model, the 2023. It's a better vehicle. The black line edition, because it just so happened to be all available black, and all the black lines. Yeah. Are great. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward is, to that. Is the the grill blacked out on the black line? Blacked out grill. Blacked out. Because I've seen one in town. Uh, I didn't know yeah. if it was like from the factory but it right. is even the uh, the trim you know in the rear where you open the tailgate yep. those black. all the chrome trims are yep. blacked out like a chrome black chrome i should say and it has big black wheels too black wheels oh, uh, yeah i've seen i've seen black. one in person it's yeah i actually stunning. have stunning when did i see where did i see it recently where was it i, can't, I think in vancouver actually i just saw one recently and this changed the color of the interior it used to be dark gray but now it's this really light gray, which is uh, going to be harder to keep uh, clean. It, but it used it to be called Ekru, but I don't know what they call it anymore. No, no, they they have a different name, uh, something stone gray or something. Okay, or, I can't remember, but but the interior color was has changed. Uh, exterior color is available only in three nori green, which is the one I would like to get. Nori green is cool, but unfortunately, it wasn't available. It's the white, which is imminent pearl now instead of a starfire pearl. yeah starfire is ancient yeah. color so they ch they're changing I, I don't i don't know why but toyota and lexus are all changing the white color from you know a variety of different colors they had to the in the case of lexus is they're changing to imminent pearl and toyota is changing to the uh, windshield pearl yeah and it looks like these new whites are more white they're less creamy color less yellowish color uh, whereas the older whites had a bit of a kind of creamy pearl pearl color right yeah so that's changing um but the interior is this light gray which uh, i don't know what they call it there's the blacked out rear lights yeah yeah so what i saw was this vehicle this doesn't look right because that was also blacked out the one i saw yeah so yeah this this, this is, could be pre-production and it's not yeah. quite finished because mm -hmm. the one i saw all the bezel around was a darkened and then this was black it wasn't yeah, the, the sparkly gray right right yeah so it looked a lot better mm. than this so yeah i'm looking forward to it because it's the last v8 powered lexus right it will be mm -hmm. the last one. Oh, yeah. sorry other than the lc of course but in the mainstream models yeah. because the gx is supposed to be new next year sometime if rumors are right then we're going to get an all new lexus gx about a year from now on mm -hmm. And uh, so I know it seems odd to buy the current model because usually I buy the newest model that comes out. But I really like the GX. So if I don't like it or if I like the new one better, then I can always trade, trade yeah. up in a year. But yeah. I, I got to own the last V8 powered Lexus GX before it's gone. Just like uh, just like I should have done with uh, Tundra and other. Uh, well, I do have the four Land Cruiser, maybe. Land Cruiser, yeah, it would have been beautiful to have a Land Cruiser. Yeah. But anyway, so that's my current news i'll see how it goes apparently ahmed from a car care nut is also purchased lexus gx i don't think he talked about it in the channel yet um but all the media guys we all love the gx, GX right is, it's a legend it's old and outdated but we love it yeah, yeah in other parts of the <laughs> yeah. world it's the prado and people i mean it's they love it's the, legendary yeah it's, it's the legendary. only way you can say yeah, it. yeah. they really it's, like it's that. a land cruiser simple as that it's just a yeah. smaller land cruiser Will it be a hybrid GX, a new model? You, I'm sure there will be a hybrid model. By 2025, yeah, every single Lexus in the lineup will at least have some electrification. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, no, this one's going to be gas guzzler for sure. <laughs> that's okay. Tundra is pretty heavy on gas, too. That thing is pretty yeah. big. So, I, and um, even though that's i4 Max, it's still, I don't know, I'm not getting a very good fuel economy on it. So, but it might when, be because it's still new. Here, when I tested the i4 Max powertrains, I, I wasn't seeing better fuel economy necessarily. Yeah. Slightly, maybe one or two. Yeah, slightly better, but one not as two. much as we thought. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 for emission savings, I think. This mm. white Toyota, they did it for emissions, and, for emissions. and more torque. Yeah, and but more you can't tow as much because it's no, heavier. Exactly. <laughs> so it's a catch twenty two. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tricky one. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I th I think I will miss the Tundra for what it stands for, which is. Well, you know, I go fishing a lot, so just holding stuff in the back of the pickup bed is convenient. But right. it's also just way too big for where I live in Vancouver, which Vancouver mm -hmm. is like New York, very densely populated, mm -hmm. really tight parking mm -hmm. space. And I can't really, most of the time, I can't take it anywhere because I can't right. park it. So with the GX, I mean, there's so much overlanding, like uh, third party 
things like you could pull could, down I that could. third row and yeah. then put in like uh, so, some organizers and That's stuff true. like that for I your could, fishing I gear could, i could do that yeah, yeah. And it'd probably do well on your channel because people like seeing that, yeah. that overlanding customization that's true so. so i have the gx and then one my other company manager has uh which is our company car is a forerunner right 2021 so we'll mm -hmm. have the two tahara built the last of the two tahara built traditional old-fashioned models mm -hmm. before they both change over the new model so mm -hmm. it'll be kind of fun to compare the two okay all right that i mean that's all we have for lexus david what else could we see at the auto show that would spark mm. interest for you let me see oh uh did we talk about the porsche.car i guess yeah, we did you mentioned that one already uh, i'm just kind of scanning through what else got announced there or what will be announced there but i think we covered pretty well everything there might be oh there's a fiat 500 electric model maybe Wait, fiat still in america yeah they only have one model but they're still hanging the on 500x i don't know which model which is available right now even but they are supposed to bring a 500 electric model that's supposed to be there or electric or not electric i'm not sure and uh, vinfast will be there i was in vietnam about half a year ago mm -hmm. to tour their factory and their head office so vinfast will bring their uh vf not just the vf8 that's for sale now but also the vf9 which is going to be for sale later as well as the vf6 and vf7 yeah, and... so it's asian autos we didn't talk about them really yeah that's but true. yeah they are. i mean they are the emerging brand that is surprising everyone with great design good performance i i really like driving mm -hmm. it and they're like fast and furious in terms of expanding their dealer network so that's coming mm -hmm. Uh, the big and then, thing with VinFast, not only are they like just coming out of nowhere, guns blazing, mm -hmm. but they have this battery leasing situation, right. right? Yeah, but they changed it now to offer an option. So it was, you had to um, to buy the VinFast car, you have to buy it and then lease the battery separately, and which, which lowers the cost Subs of the car. Subscription so they, service. Yeah, subscription. And it was not a, I mean, it's a reasonable business proposal in the sense that it lowers the, uh, the cost of the initial purchase of the VinFast models and then but you have to lease the battery but now they have gone back and said they will offer both options so you can either buy the car or lease the car and lease the battery or buy the whole thing out right out, uh, out outright I should say with the battery included so that's a change um, with the VinFast so you don't have to lease the battery anymore right either way we don't know exactly what's going to happen in the sense that VinFast is so new, not enough, you know, that, well, I've driven it just briefly, briefly. in Vietnam, but there's, there has not been a proper media review here yet in North America. Right. So that's something that we won't know, but the, the company behind it is shockingly powerful in Vietnam. We, we went to visit uh, VinFast University, VinFast Hospital, VinFast Real Estate Development, Oh my goodness, that, that thing is like Toyota, but in the Vietnam world, and it has so they, much I power. Mean, maybe even more diverse. Even more diverse, yeah. yeah, perhaps. Well, Toyota has real estate, Toyota has Toyota, Toyota makes homes in Japan. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, they do, yeah, so. Would you guys like to see that on a channel? Would David and I go review a Toyota house? Yeah, it's actually really cool. They build a Toyota house like a car. So every 10 minutes, a house comes off the assembly line. No, yeah. no. Instead of every minute. You can't make this up. Yeah, no, no, I'm not making it up. I, I was in the factory. And so usually every minute, Toyota car comes off the assembly line. But every 10 minutes, a house comes off the assembly line. But it's in pieces, like a living room, a kitchen, all separate pieces. And it gets shipped to a house, a location. It gets they, assembled there. A like, final assembly takes like a Lego. Yeah, just yeah. It's that's done. happening in America now too. I'm starting to see it. Like um, a prefab, we call prefab pre home. They're like prefab, but it's like in Florida, everything has to be built out of like uh, cement. Okay, I so see. So all the yeah. like walls are coming in, right. not as individual cinder blocks, but as like pre-manufactured wall, right? walls. Yeah. So so, uh, but they build the home on site in six hours. I was going to say, if, yeah. it's, if it's, it's like Legos, it'd built. be super fast. Yeah, it's really fascinating. No, But that factory is very hard to get into. I only, is it? I've, I've only been there twice. Wow. Is it affordable? Yeah, uh, yeah. so they make everything from like a entry-level home all the way to super luxury home. And it's all custom built to your specification. You build it on site and then Toyota builds it. Like, like basically like 
building a Lexus LC. It's like literally custom built, bespoke to the owner. And it's it's not expensive. I'm so fascinated. I'm gonna have to research this. <laughs> there's a Toyota University, there's a Toyota Hospital. There is. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I they didn't know everything. They own I need own. to go to Japan with David one of these times so he can teach me. <laughs> teach me the Toyota ways in Japan. <laughs> we'll go visit everything. There's a, even a secret to a Starbucks underneath the Toyota head office. Underground. That, that public doesn't know, but you but public can go, but they don't know about they it. They don't know about yeah, it. Yeah, there's a, um, a reception area. Uh, there's a place called Toyota Kaika, which is like a showroom. And if you go down this one little stairs all the way down, there's an actual Starbucks underneath the Toyota head office and uh, only Toyota people are usually there but anyone can walk in okay I think we're getting close right yeah I, I, is there anything else from the other mini we just talked about VinFast um the other mini we just talked about VinFast um our Toyota house is reliable that's what people are wondering <laughs> super reliable super. they're, they're earthquake proof fireproof you can take like uh, they take like a uh, Whatchamacallit, fire hose with a, whatchamacallit, not fire hose, but fire shooting out. Oh, a flamethrower. Flamethrower, and they put it against the house and show that it doesn't burn down. So, if you guys like that kind of stuff, <laughs> I can talk about it in my channel in the future. Jimmy Amico loves his 21LX. Can't wait to get your 23GX. Okay. They're going to be right next mm. to each other in the garage. That would nice. be a nice combination. Nice combo. You must have a big <laughs> garage, that is for sure. That is a big car. Yeah, there is a little Tokyo nearby, 10 minutes from here. We, maybe we need to go there for bubble tea. Should we do that? Put it on <laughs> maybe, the channel? Maybe. <laughs> like a, a short or something, yeah, exactly. or just like a selfie. Maybe, maybe we should do that. Yeah, we just got done eating at a, like a Southern Comfort fried chicken place. Really good. I'm yeah, full, good food. so full. Oh, yeah, me too. If we didn't do the live stream, I would have taken a nap. <laughs> yeah. Well, I All think, right. unless you have anything else, I'm... I'm no, ready I to think, rest uh, my head until the reveal, yeah, 6.30 p.m. 6.30 p.m. We'll be there just before that, and yep. hopefully one of us can do a bit of a live stream. If not, we'll do some kind of filming anyway. Yeah. And then hopefully you'll, uh, you'll come back and watch us again. So keep an eye on our channels for next little while, right, guys? All right. Thanks, David, for coming to yeah. the live stream here in L.A., and uh, we'll see you guys, I'm sure, in another live stream or video a collaboration in the future so stay in touch guys thank you so much for watching that yeah. was fun thanks for all the donations for you you deep yeah. pocket folk out there appreciate <laughs> you all right